quick roll call and then, um, or should we go into close? Why don't we just call it roll? How's that? Call roll and then we'll go into um, okay. to, um, Mayor Pro Tem Sanchez is not present at the moment. Council Member Ibarra? Council Member Figueroa? Present here. Council Member Charette? Here. Council Member Nickel? Here. Council Member Richard is not present at the moment. And Council Member Mulvey Hill? He's right here. Terry, if you could let me know when um, Council Member Richard and Council Member Sanchez sign on, okay? I certainly will. And then Genevieve, the public comments? There are no public comments for a closed session. Okay, very good. Let's go ahead and then I, do we need to leave uh, into closed session? How are we going to work that, Terry? We're going to have IAMG leave. And all city staff and let's uh, salute our flag if you don't have a flag face north ready begin i pledge allegiance, allegiance to, the to the flag of the united, of the united states, states of america and to the republic for which it stands one nation under god indivisible with liberty and justice for all <clears throat> we'll go ahead and open this specially called meeting um, to address our um, city council budget and the finances of our city. This time I'll ask our city clerk to please call the roll. Member Sanchez? Here. Council member Ibarra? Here. Council member Figueroa? Here, present. Council member Charette? Member Charette. Council Member Nickel. Here. Council Member Richard. Here. Council Member Mulvihill. Here. And Mayor Valdivia. Present. Okay, um, at this time, um, do we have a city attorney representative or do we have anything to report out of uh, closed session? This city manager, there you are. Sorry, Mayor. No, we don't have the city attorney with us tonight. Um, our HR director may be able to report out of closed session since I was not there. If it's reportable, it may not be reportable, Mayor. Okay. So proceed. Very good. Um, at this time, we have um, a council uh, workshop scheduled for tonight to discuss uh, preliminarily the budget. This time we'll ask um, that council members hold their questions till the uh, end of the presentation. Um, and um, we've had those packets delivered to you um, on Friday, I believe. And so you should have received all that information. It's quite substantive. Um, and so at this time, we'll ask our staff to make the presentation. Mayor, very quickly, um, did you want to hear the public comments prior to the presentation? Um, sure. Okay, just one moment. We have four um, comments. Okay, very good. Public comments for Treasurer Ortiz. Council, you're back again tonight looking at the budget. And I ask that you please start making decisions that are long-term, not just snapshots in time. We're two and a half months into a pandemic with just a depleting economy. Businesses are hurting. The looting the other night didn't help. We don't even know if the businesses that were going to reopen will not have a chance to. And when I look at the proposal, I don't see necessary cuts. I see quick and easy. I don't see the city manager offering up her salary, the mayor offering up his salary, the chief of police, assistant chief of police, all the raises that were given last year. What I see is fast and easy from a city manager that will be gone next year. The mayor said that I was incorrect last week when I talked about the, the non-passing of tax measures. Well, the only thing I was incorrect about, it wasn't 90%, it was 80%. And so I have to ask you guys, what is your consultant telling you? Because in the county of San Bernardino, 
80% of our tax measures and bonds failed. So are they giving you, what, that the city of Laverne passed a tax increase pre-COVID-19? Are you guys taking that into consideration that in our own neighborhood, in our own back door, that people are not wanting to spend more money and then take us into November? And you're going to what? What are we going to do? Convince people that they have to keep giving money they don't have. These have to be real considerations taken into account. But we're not seeing that. What we're seeing is that it's complacency. Let's just kick the can down the road until December and we'll deal with it then. When we may not be able to deal with it, it may overtake us. Let's be wrong. Let's be wrong and say that Measure Z actually passes in November, but we've made the necessary cuts now in June. Why can't we plan that way? Why do we have to continually scramble? And another issue that we saw online from Sandra Barra was that she posted that council is apparently not being able to ask the questions that they want during these meetings that are public, that she feels shut down uh, by the mayor. And I ask all of you council members to come together to help her understand information, to ask her questions, to clarify. Because regardless of the fact that you are elected ward by ward, what you do impacts us as a whole. And nobody should be shut down. So do what needs to be done tonight for San Bernardino. Thank you. And good evening. This is Tim Prince calling. I'm a lifelong resident of San Bernardino. Practice law in downtown San Bernardino for over 30 years. I'm uh, calling with some uh, comments on the uh, budget. I'll call it a budget crisis. Um, the city continues to waste money at a rate that's unsustainable. Uh, you have luxury office space from your campaign contributor in the Vanier Tower. Uh, I understand you're in negotiations to reduce that space, which is good. It should be drastically reduced and eliminated, and the rate per square foot needs to be negotiated. The Vanier uh, Corporation um, is a uh, very lucrative uh, company that can afford to help the city and can at least uh, lower the per square foot rate to what other uh, large tenants pay downtown, which is closer to $1 per square foot, not way over $2 per square foot. And uh, there's nothing that says the city has to have the prime north-facing um, penthouse office space. Um, the city can uh, adjust its space in the short term and end that arrangement as soon as possible and move back into our historic city hall. Uh, the city needs to redouble its efforts in pursuing grants, pursuing help from uh, various government and private sources. Um, for instance, Assembly Member Eloise Reyes should be consulted. She would certainly be helpful to the city and has in the past and solves problems like this. Uh, instead of just continuing to allow that building to languish, it's an historic uh, building built by a world-famous architect who just died recently. Um, his company should be consulted to uh, see what can be done to get that building up and running again at a minimum of cost. The parking structure was uh, retrofitted to a point where it could be kept open, and that's what we need to do with City Hall, something where the supports of that building are strengthened and the most important work is done and move back into that building to stop the bleeding. Also, the legal expenses of this city are way out of control. Um, the causes of that are very poor prevent preventive uh, legal advice. We're getting into liability with the police department and we're um, continuing to spend too much money on outside attorneys. So we need to ring. Yes, this is Paul Sanborn here. 
Good evening, Honorable Mayor and Council. You know, it has come to my uh, attention here, per se, that it would be like if I seen Fred Charette or Mulder Hill or something shoot somebody, and I was witness to it, that it actually could be a conviction. But yet on the same token, too, when I see somebody fire off fireworks, the police department or the fire department, either one of them, say, no, you know, you've seen it, but we didn't see it. We have to see it, otherwise we can't go after them. You know, I would actually wonder if you guys would ponder that a little bit. Is there not something wrong with that uh, evaluation there that one cannot see somebody do it and in turn uh, get them to get a ticket, per se, or whatever, instead of sitting there saying, no, it don't count? Anyhow, have a good day. Thank you. Goodbye. Hello, my name is John Gadesi. Is it possible for the city to have a reverse phone call alert for when there is a curfew or an emergency that is in place for the city of San Bernardino? I'm sure we would all appreciate it. I know many senior citizens that do not have access or use social media. Thank you for considering this. Reverse phone call to the residents of San Bernardino when there is a curfew or an emergency in place. Thank you. And that concludes public comment. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Ms. City Manager, let's get right into why we came here tonight to discuss and um, hear a report from your team. So without further delay, um, Ms. City Manager. Thank you, Mayor and Council members. Um, as you recall, on May 21st, we presented a very high level overview of our current budget projections for the upcoming fiscal year. At that time, you approved expenditure reductions as identified in attachment two, which included holding a number of positions vacant, eliminating three vacant positions, and two filled positions effective June 1st. Savings from these actions are ongoing and will carry into the new fiscal year. This evening, our finance director, Paul Espinosa, and his team will be providing you with more detail on the proposed budget as it was originally prepared pre-COVID with revenue reductions, along with staff recommendations to bridge the gap that we're seeing now and anticipating. Uh, Paul, with that, I'm gonna turn it over to you and your team. Thanks, Terry. Um, good evening, Mayor and City Council. Before you this evening is the fiscal year 2021 proposed budget. And with that, we'll go ahead and get into it. Next slide, please. We'll be reviewing this evening um, the following, the uh, COVID impact, general fund summary, a look at our reserves, a general fund overview, revenues and expenditures, uh, departmental review, and strategies to balance our general fund budget, followed by an update to our 10-year forecast. Next slide, please. A uh, little bit of background. Uh, our proposed budget reflects uh, an overall operating deficit of $10.3 million to our general fund. The budget reflects the cost of providing services that at this time are not keeping in pace with our expenditures. These ex revenues have been decreased by our COVID-19. And uh, for the current year, the 1920 year that we're currently in, it's helpful to remember that $11.2 million was cut from this budget. And again, this was for uh, COVID-19. A deficit of 1.3 million originally was anticipated for the 2021 budget. And that was when we started uh, doing our preliminary budget back in January. Um, then with our limited ability to generate new revenue streams, um, cuts to our service levels seem to be the only way to try and bring this budget into a, a closer balance. Next slide, please. Our challenges today, um, the county, as you are aware, in March ordered a shelter in place order. Retail stores, hotels, and restaurants were forced to close uh, completely and struggles to adopt to this extraordinary change. Based on this closure and this economic shutdown in our community, our, a lot of our sales tax revenues have, have really come to a, not to a screeching halt, but have been decreased significantly. Um, moving forward, these decrease on spendings and goods and services have also impacted our city. Next slide. Uh, COVID impact cuts to the 1920 budget. Uh, 
on. Last month, staff had come to the council and advised them of the impacts to the current year, the 1920 year. Overall, we were expecting a $5.1 million shortfall in our general fund revenues. And that was just recognized in the last quarter of the year when our COVID-19 took place. These reductions were in sales taxes, about 3.8 million. Our Measure Z sales tax, about 611,000. Uh, TOT, uh, 575,000. And the use of property and leases declined about 180,000. Again, 1920 year. Next slide, please. Overview of our general fund. Um, just to recap, uh, we're looking at a decrease of about 8.9 million from our pre-COVID estimates. Our budgeted expenditures are remaining relatively flat. And currently the city has 641 um, employees or FTEs. And this does not reflect the five positions that were approved for deletion on May 21st. We'll look at our reserves. Uh, it's helpful to remember that at the beginning of the, the, the 1920 year, our general fund balance was about $30 million. The pre-COVID column reflects where we thought we were going to land prior to March. We were looking about overall $132.9 million in revenues and $134.3 million in expenditures. We were thinking at this time we would be bringing to you a, a plan to bridge $1.3 million deficit. Then COVID-19 hit. As a result of that, our 1920 budget year had to be amended to reflect a decrease in our reserves of about $5.1 million. And we can trace that directly to the fall in our general fund reserves as a result of COVID-19. Moving forward, our 2021 revenues are also projected to fall a little bit more, well, significantly more, to $124.1 million, leaving us with uh, an overall projected deficit for the 2021 year of $10.2 million. Next slide, please. This is a, a snapshot of our reserves uh, over the past five years. As you can see in 18, we, uh, we were getting close to our mark of our, our general fund reserve level of about 25%, and we were striving to get closer. Um, then and our actuals for 19 came down a little bit less than we had anticipated, and then, of course, our fiscal year 20 estimate, which was impacted by our COVID-19 loss in revenues, and further for the 2021 proposed year, uh, reflecting additional uh, revenue decreases. Again, the, the 13.9 million reflects what our reserve level will be if no action is taken moving forward. Um, we are not proposing that, but we're just letting you know where the budget stands right now. With that, we'll get into the next slide. This reflects our general fund revenues to expenditures, our expenditures being the orange and the revenues being the blue. You can see where in the middle column, our revenues dropped from previous expectations of 132 million down to 126 million, directly related to our COVID-19 and our expenditures remained relatively flat. Uh, the 2021 preliminary budget, the one that we were planning on bringing forward to you before COVID-19 reflected Again, about a $1.3 million deficit that we were hoping to bridge. After the COVID-19 and updating our revenues, again, we're looking at a, a much bigger much bigger gap. Next slide, please. Overview of key city revenues. The city has several sources of revenues. Um, some, um, several of them are in our general fund and some of them are restricted in non-general funds. Those are our special revenue funds. Um, Review of our more significant revenue sources within the general fund and some of our restricted revenues we're going to take a closer look at this evening. Next slide, please. As you can see, and as with prior years, um, our city is relatively dependent upon sales taxes and property taxes. Uh, sales taxes makes up about 32.4 million. Utility users tax about 23.2. Property tax 18.3. Uh, license and permits about 11 million, franchise fees 10 million, and Measure Z about 7.9 or 8 million. Overall, those revenues reflect 83% of our overall general fund revenue. And those are the ones we're going to take a little bit closer look at this evening. Next slide, please. Total general fund revenues, again, um, are projected about 124.1 million. And that reflects about an $8 million decrease from what we were looking at at um, our 1920 mid year. Sales tax, again, is looking to decrease by 6%, Measure Z 10%, Property 
property taxes is looking to actually increase this year about 9%, which we're kind of excited about. And again, our transient occupancy taxes are looking to remain flat. Sales taxes, again, by far our largest revenue source, makes up 1% of the local 8% applied to overall sales and some services. Projections are based on node trends in the region and in state. And uh, overall, our forecast is looking at a decline of about 6% in the 2021 year. Next slide, please. Based on our pre-COVID estimates, um, the drop in sales tax is predominantly expected in the following sectors. Now, this, these declines that we're talking about right now are compared to what we we're anticipating we we're going to be in the 2021 year as we were working through our preliminary budget. Based on that, our general consumer goods is looking to drop 16%. Auto and transportation is dropping 26%. Restaurants and hotels are anticipated to fall below our previous estimates of about 23%. Building and construction, 18 And fuel and service stations, down 12%. Next slide, please. And here is a, a picture of our sales tax history. Again, in 2019 and um, our previous 20 mid-year projection, we were, we were looking like we were going to continue to grow. However, um, in March when COVID-19 hit and brought a, a quick halt to a lot of our retail growth, we dropped from 38.3% uh, down to 34 million. And then in 2021, we're looking at dropping another, another 2 million and change. Next slide, please. Measures E revenue. Um, as council is aware, this was approved and reflects uh, 25% or a quarter percent of our transaction tax, which brings our local sales tax rate up to 8%. Uh, it expires April of uh, 22, and uh, that will be the sunset of a 15-year tax. The func it functions much like our sales tax, with the exception of some of your larger purchases like cars, vehicles, um, appliances. And uh, our pre-COVID revenue projections were, were looking about $9.4 million. Post-COVID, as you know, has dropped down to just under $8 million. Next slide, please. This is our Measure Z history. Um, again, in 19, it looks like our Measure Z was peaking. And um, our 20 mid-year projection, we were kind of keeping it a little bit conservative below the, the 19 actuals. But then COVID-19 hit. And like with our sales taxes, we're showing declines of uh, down to $8.7 million and just under uh, $8 million in 2021. Next slide, please. Overview of our, our city revenues. Um, our utility users tax is a tax that is based on um, utilities on our current residents. It's, um, it's a hard revenue to judge. We've uh, looked out to other cities, about 13 other cities, to ask them what they were doing with theirs. And we looked how ours was trending. And it's, uh, it doesn't look like we're going to see a, a decline in this revenue category, although we're keeping an eye on it. Um, so we're going to keep this revenue relatively flat based on our previous estimate. Next slide, please. And as you can see, we're, we're keeping it flat. It, it, we're unsure if this is going to be impacted by COVID-19, and if it is, how? Um, we've reached out to several of our uh, utility companies and asked the same, and nobody has a real guess on that. So for that, we're going to go ahead and keep this one flat, but we'll continue to monitor it. Next slide. Property tax in lieu of VLF. We're looking about um, this coming in about 18.3 in the 2021 year. And again, this is property tax money that was swapped um, by the state when they um, cut the car tax. I'm not too sure if we all remember the triple flip. It's a headache to repeat, so I'm not going to try and burden you with that tonight. Uh, it grows like property tax, and um, it's, it's subject to our DLF sharing agreement with the county. If council will recall, we recently had this reviewed, and it brought our, our former uh, allocation from 65% six, up to 73.5% in favor of the city. Uh, County is providing indication of what our VLF will be in subsequent years. And typically we, we gauge this relatively conservative and we'll continue to do so. Next slide, please. This reflects our property tax in lieu of VLF. I apologize, it says property tax, but it's really a property tax in lieu. Um, as we know, most of our property tax is going towards our fire um, district. And here you can see that um, it's, it's been growing somewhat marginally. And again, um, when we see our growth, we have to remember that we, we were able to get this VLF percentage increased not, not too long ago. 
So this is what we're looking at for the next year. Overview of revenues. Um, our TOT taxes, again, in last month and the month before, when COVID-19 hit, we knew several of our hotels were, were basically just having nobody, no vacancies. Um, we had called and talked with, I believe it's about 13 different hotels and asked them about their vacancy rates. We were trying to get a good feel for it. And we, we learned that of the 42 active hotels in the city, they were trending to come in about $5 million in transient occupancy tax. But when COVID-19 hit, we reached out to several of our operators. And in one month's time, uh, we saw a decline in uh, an occupancy rate of 80% down to a little less than 30%. Um, so we are basing our estimates based on our outreach with our hotels and what we've seen coming in. And since um, since that time, our 2021 revised amount is down from about $5 million down to $4.4 million in the next fiscal year. Next slide, please. And here you can see the, the, the decline. Overall, the drop happens from the uh, 19 to the 20 mid-year projection, and then you can see where our decline is. We're unsure of how long the shelter in place orders are gonna stay and how long this will be in, impacting our economy overall. Uh, our hope is that we'll have a quick and quick recovery, but we're gonna continue to keep this revenue category down and we'll monitor it and see, uh, see if it's growing. Next slide, please. Uh, overall, our license and permits is projected to come in about just under 11 million for the 2021 year, and this is based on revenues collected from residents and businesses for the uh, right to conduct, conduct an activity or build something within the city. Uh, business registration collects roughly 80% of the total revenue, and it's, it's pretty much a static revenue source. Um, Development-related permits make up the most significant part of this, and we have seen some development moving in the city and continue despite COVID-19. Um, it reflects... Um, Despite that, we're still re anticipating a projected uh, decline of 4%, which when you compare to our other revenue declines of COVID-19, it's not as bad. Uh, we will again continue to monitor this. And here is a, a quick chart of our license and permits. As you can see, it's relatively flat in the 20, 19, 20, and 21 year. We'll continue to monitor this and, uh, and report to you as, uh, as we see changes. Next slide, please. Charges for services. Uh, this is collected um, for services provided to our residents, businesses, and guests. It includes development-oriented fees and other um, cost centers, such as community services, parks and rec, and police and library. Uh, as council is aware, this revenue will include, um, I'm sorry, let me back up here. Prior to this year, the 2021 year, this revenue was was booked and recorded into our trust account or deposit account. Trying to get a, a clearer picture of this, we are now booking and, and budgeting the revenue and expenditures related to these services in the general fund. So the good news is we're going to see an increase in our general fund uh, activity, but with that comes the expenditures that are now also being booked in the general fund. Um, overall, for the 2021 year, we're looking at a 4.3% decrease or $260,000 from our previous uh, COVID-19 projections. This again reflects uh, the change in our charges for services. You can see again that we're showing a 5.7 million increase, but again, this relates to us moving our, our costs and our budget from our deposit account to our general fund account. Our general fund, sorry. Next slide, please. Franchise fees. These are projected to amount to about 10.1 million, and it reflects a modest decline of uh, 355,000. Like our UUT, we were uh, unable to get a real gauge on the impact of COVID-19 on our franchise fees. As such, we're showing a, a conservative decline, but not much. Like our UUT, we'll continue to monitor this and make sure um, if there are any changes that are significant, we will report back to council. Use of money and property, we're looking at a decline in this as well. Some of the leases with whom the city has have requested uh, waivers or outright cancellations of their contracts. These include Big Five Sporting Goods, um, Regal Cinemas, and Shandon Hills Golf Course. Um, however, we are working with those to see if we can continue to get operators in those, uh, those lease facilities pretty soon. Next slide, please. 
Um, Two of our non-general funds, um, are, this next section will review our, our funds that are restricted in nature, our non-general funds. These are what we call our special revenue funds or our grant funds, and they're restricted by the how they are spent and how they are collected. First is our uh, housing and urban development funds, CDBG, HOME, ESG, and NS, NSP programs. These funds are used to target blight areas and, uh, and certain and are spent with certain economic criteria. Our gasoline tax, including new gas tax funding, it's the city's share of our per gallon gas tax, and it's paid by purchasers. As we all are aware, gasoline sales have been declining, and so has the cost of gasoline per gallon, having much to do with our COVID-19. Um, overall, we're looking at $9 million in the 2021 year, and um, this is restricted for the maintenance on streets and construction projects. Measure I funds is generated from the half cent countywide sales tax, also generated for use for street maintenance and construction projects. It's subject to an annual audit, and nearly 3.2 million is projected in the fiscal year 2021. Development impact fees. Past practices, we don't typically budget this revenue or the expenditure. Um, we update this as we go along. Various fees are assessed to new developments to recover estimated costs and the impact associated with these new developments. And these again are restricted for specific projects to relieve the impact associated with these new developments. Next slide, please. Expenditures that um, do not include proposed reductions. These uh, are general fund expenditures and are up about 6% or 7.5 million compared to the 1920 adopted budget. These general fund expenditures amount to $134 million. Um, overall, this is a status quo budget or a hold the line budget. Uh, none of the departments have come forward with any real increases to their budgets. Overall, these increases are reflected by um, cost benefits, retirements, and merit increases. That's the main purpose for these increases. Next slide, please. Uh, general fund expenditures uh, by category. Uh, public safety, of course, makes up the lion's share of our overall general fund budget. Uh, public works makes up about 13%, general government 6%, and community and economic development about 4%. Overall, those four uh, constitute about 86% of our overall general fund budget, and um, that's, that's consistent with prior years. Next slide, please. As I was saying earlier, salary and benefits, this in, addresses our employee uh, retention and attraction and is um, previously approved through MOUs, merit increases. And no increases are included for cost of living, by the way, and um, or health insurance allowances. Again, what drives most of these costs up is our, our PERS costs and um, our unfunded liability payment increased by 2.7 million. Our total payments, 26.5 million. And the city, as with prior years, prepays in July to save about $912,000 on an annual basis. Next slide, please. Liabilities and workers' comp. Uh, these insurance premiums are budgeted at 2.47 uh, million, I'm sorry, 2.4 million, and reflects an increase of 49% or 793,000 from the prior fiscal year. Premium for excess workers' comp insurance coverage is budgeted at 651,000, and reflects an increase of 22%. Internal service charges. While these departments, overall the departments have held their service levels to the 1920 year, reflecting no growth really in their budget. It's important to remember that merit increases, health insurance costs, and CalPERS costs are, are allocated through our internal service charges. And this also impacts everyone's bottom line. So even though departments aren't requesting increases to their budget, their budgets are growing. And it's not because they're requesting for more. It's cost of doing business with respect to PERS and, um, and such. Next slide, please. With that, we're going to go ahead and get into our departmental budget review, starting with the A's, animal control. Overall budget is um, projected to come in for about $2.7 million. It consists of two divisions and 23 full-time employees. Budget highlights include uh, our animal control is now its own department and um, our director of animal services position was approved and created in the fiscal year 1920. City attorney. Um, 
budget highlights. Uh, total budget is looking to come in about 2.6 million and consists of one division and two FTEs. Our budget highlights include um, outlights legal services increased by 500,000, which is less than 900 compared to the 1920 amended budget. Um, the city's last elected attorney expired in March of 20, resulting in a savings of $100,000 compared to the prior year. City clerk, uh, total budget is looking to come in about $909,000 and consists of three divisions and four full-time employees. Budget highlights include a $90,000 increase. As we know, our, our, our county ballots are every other year, and that increase is anticipated in the current year at $90,000. Next slide, please. City Council. Uh, budget is looking to come in about $860,000. Consists of two divisions, which is City Council and Council Support, and um, includes two FTEs and seven elected positions. Uh, budget is largely consistent with the prior year's level of expenditures. Not a whole lot of uh, growth there. Next slide. City manager. Total budget amounts to about uh, $3.4 million. Consists of six divisions and 17 full-time equivalents. Um, does not inc uh, the budget does not reflect the deletion of five positions that were approved in, the 20, in May of 2020. But we are um, looking at it, uh, amending the budget to reflect that. Budget highlights include uh, the recruitment division is now being transferred to the human resources division or department, my bad. Three full-time employees formerly in the mayor's office uh, have been transferred to the city manager's office. And uh, professional contract services in the uh, violence intervention program or the VIP program have been reduced by 175,000 compared to the prior year. Next slide. Community development. Um, total budget amounts to $29.8 million, um, consists of seven divisions and 30 full-time equivalents. Uh, all highlights in this department include uh, code enforcement divisions being transferred from the police department, which amounts to about $1.2 million. Land development division was transferred to public works, uh, just under $650,000. Property maintenance cost for properties held for resale is being transferred to the public works department for about $287,000. And uh, $975,000 in revenues and expenditures have been moved from the, from the deposit account to the community development general fund account. That's something we had touched on earlier. Next slide, please. Finance. Total budget amounts to about $3.7 uh, million, consists of five divisions and 23 full-time equivalents. Budget highlights include $180,000 is set aside for various audits and we're on track to have our audits done and on schedule. General government, um, total budget amounts to $10 million and it uh, attributes to the costs on a citywide basis. And these include uh, the animal control transfer from the general fund of 2.3 million, debt service payments of 2.5 million, tax sharing agreements accounting of 1.9 million, citywide dues and subscriptions of 125,000, Cooperative maintenance agreements with the uh, San Bernardino Depot and the Downtown Transit Center of about $895,000. Next slide. Human resources amounts to about $10.5 million and consists of four divisions and 10 full-time equivalents. Budget highs include the transfer from the city manager's department for recruiting, that's one FTE, and uh, property uh, excess workers' comp insurance and excess liability insurance premiums will continue to increase due to existing levels in the marketplace. Next slide, please. Information technology. Overall, the budget amounts to uh, just over 4.5 million, consists of six divisions and 13 FTEs. Uh, after staffing costs, about 70% of this overall budget is directed towards the annual cost of software, maintenance, hardware, agreements, phone networks, and expenses. Provides funding to continue strategic replacement of the city's personal computers. Approximately 15 new machines uh, in the next fiscal year. Next slide. Library constitutes about $2.1 million. Consists of four divisions and 11 full-time equivalents. The budget highlights um, overall the proposed budget continues to fully fund existing levels. A service being provided to the community throughout the library and three additional branch library systems. Next slide. 
mayor's office. Um, overall, that budget amounts to about 467000 includes one uh, FTE and one elected position for the 2021 year. And the budget highlights include three FTEs transferred from the mayor's office to the city manager's office. Next slide, please. Parks and Rec, um, overall that budget amounts to about $5 million, consists of three divisions and 21 FTEs. Budget highlights include um, a new automated external defibrillators. Uh, these were purchased and installed at five of our city pools. And aquatics has risen in the number of overall attendees uh, to our swim programs and swim sessions. Next slide. Police budget amounts to about 86.9 million, consists of four divisions and 365 FTEs in the 2021 fiscal year. Budget highlights include uh, code enforcement divisions being transferred to the Community and Economic Development Department. Animal Control is now its own division. And, con and the um, contract cost for uh, body-worn cameras program was transferred from our asset forfeiture fund to the Police Department's general fund budget, the amount of $287,000. Next slide. Public works budget amounts to uh, $26.6 million, consists of five divisions and 111 full-time equivalents. Highlights in this department include uh, land development program transferred from community and economic development to our public works department, property maintenance transferred from community economic developments and integrated into our facility maintenance program, Maintains funding for traffic management studies, traffic counts, and professional and contractual budgets to support street maintenance. Next slide, please. With that, we're going to go ahead and get into our uh, budget balancing strategies. Overall, we're looking at 7.2 uh, million in budget balancing plans, and these are summarized as follows and in the following slides. Um, the following measures uh, below were approved um, to bridge the gap of about $3 million and we're addressed through, our, I'm sorry, let me back up. With our budget deficit, we've come up with about 7.2 million in budget balancing strategies. These are summarized below, and we're gonna get into more detail on those right now. After those, we're looking at a deficit bridge to gap, I mean, deficit cap to bridge of about $3 million. Sorry, I've been talking a while, my mouth is getting kind of dry. Overall, um, our general fund revenues are projected to come in about 124 million, general fund expenditures of about 134 million. To try and bridge that gap, we're looking at additional revenues of 1.6 million, departmental reductions of 2.6 million, transfer and residual funds from audit closeouts and such of 1.4, moving library parks and rec expenditures to our cultural development funds, um, evidence impound transfer of 287,000, uh, moving public works expenditures to our gas tax fund from our public works general fund, and a transfer of approximately 60000 from our PD body-worn cameras to um, the VIP program. Uh, it's, there's no impact to the general fund, but that is a transfer we're looking at making. Overall, uh, these proposed strategies and plans will reduce our deficit from $10.2 million down to about $7.2 million, leaving us with a gap of about three. Next slide, please. And now we'll go ahead and get into a little bit more detail about those plans. Um, for the city manager's office and the city attorney's office. With the uh, city attorney's office, we're looking at the uh, elimination or deletion of one administrative analyst. And in the city manager's office, we're looking at the uh, elimination of the chief of staff, uh, assistant to the mayor, senior customer services representative, and an admin analyst two. Overall, these savings would amount to about $470,000. Um, proposed balancing measures um, below are for, uh, are moving forward, include the deletion of the administrative services officer, adding a senior management analyst and holding that position vacant, kind of a wash. Um, transfer of funding from our public affairs specialist to the community economic development department for the creation of an economic development specialist. Um, and then various other operational reductions. Overall, we're looking at a total savings of 387000 Next slide, finance. Uh, looking at a department reorganization, and we're looking at eliminating the senior finance specialist, the treasury assistant, the accountant three, and deletion of the administrative analyst two. 
and then creating a principal accountant, a senior management analyst, and a part-time accountant, and various other operating reductions. Overall, the finance department is looking at a budget reduction of about $152,000. City clerk uh, is looking at the uh, deletion of the deputy city clerk position, the addition of a records management specialist and uh, PRA assistant, and an increase in passport revenues of $50,000. Overall, through uh, expenditure reductions and revenue increases, uh, city clerk's department is looking at $29,000, just under 30, actually. Parks and Rec is looking at reduction in part-time budget for aquatics and sports, overall about $43,000. Community and Economic Development is looking to um, eliminate or delete the executive assistant to the director, um, add an economic development specialist with the uh, funding from the city manager's office, and various operational reductions overall looking about $81,000 in uh, budget reduction plans. Next slide. Public Works. Sorry, throat's getting kind of dry there. Public Works is looking at holding vacant the following positions to help bridge or help with their budget reduction plan. Uh, holding vacant uh, an arborist, two facility maintenance mechanics, maintenance worker one, a real property manager, traffic engineer associate, and various operational reductions amounts to about $636,000. Animal Services is looking at holding a vacant uh, animal control officer and holding vacant a senior customer service representative overall, amounting to about $119,000 in um, budget reductions. Police is looking at holding vacant the following. Um, uh, sorry, that should be four community services officers. Uh, a vacant criminal, and uh, sorry, a criminal, and criminal investigating officer. Police uh, P&T technician, three police records technicians, one and two, and one uh, police lieutenant, overall amounting to $707,000 in departmental reductions. Uh, the impacts from keeping these positions vacant are as follows. The, um, keeping the CSO officer positions vacant, um, less CSOs would mean uh, less available time to respond to low-priority calls. And this may result in longer response times and reduced open hours at the front desk. Criminal investigative officer, keeping this position vacant could result in a lower rate of completed follow-up investigations. Personnel and training technician, internal processing of training needs within the department and hiring may take longer. And records tech one and two, slower processing time for records, reduced hours for processing live scans for public and city departments. Continued, um, staff is negotiating with the body-worn camera provider to see uh, if we can, um, to, on our annual cost for the program, our estimated savings, we're looking to come in about $60,000. It is recommended that the final budget, <clears throat> in the final budget, all savings from the body-worn camera be transferred to the VIP program to help offset the three-month delay in the grant funding. Uh, net impact to the general fund savings uh, would be removed from the police department budget to the VIP program in the city manager's office. Use of one-time funds. Um, overall, we're looking at a transfer from the 242 or the street construction fund and the grants fund in the amount of 820,000 and 644,000 respectively. Um, looking at a transfer or a use of our cultural development fund to help offset general fund costs and a transfer of evidence funds to the general fund in the amount of $287,000. Overall, this amounts to about $2.5 million in, um, in budget offsets. And to recap, and we discussed this at our last uh, council meeting, um, the, the recent audits that we had reflect um, balances for projects that have been completed years ago. And these balances were sitting in our either our street construction funds or our grant funds. Uh, we went back and, and did a reconciliation and an internal audit, if you will, of these programs and found that of the street construction and grant funds, we were able to move $820,000 and $644,000 from those counts to our general fund. Um, various items in parks and recreation and the library could be offset by our cultural development fund. Those amounts amount to about $774,000. And lastly, as discussed, uh, the police department has identified 
287,000 in impound accounts that could offset a um, cost uh, in the police department budget. Again, these funds are sperioic. I have a hard time with that word. These funds don't come in that often in nature and cannot cover costs of ongoing, on an ongoing basis. Gas tax and safety funds. Um, in order to create savings for the general fund, staff has recommended the following shift in expenditures. Transfer of $630,000 in costs related to traffic signal maintenance out of the gas tax fund into the traffic safety fund. Six hundred was budgeted in the traffic safety fund for the purchase of new patrol callers, but we are recommending that these purchases be deferred. Um, the transfer of expenditures out of gas tax funds would eliminate the projected deficit of about 175000 in the gas tax. This was a result of our gas tax revenue coming in lower as a result of COVID-19 and would create um, capacity in the tax fund to absorb 455000 of general fund public works expenditures, which would reduce the general fund deficit by the same. Revenue increases. As, as you will recall, on May 6, council approved the recommended changes to the city's master fee schedule, and it's estimated that our revenues in the next fiscal year would amount to about 967,000. Uh, our cannabis tax revenue, our City's consultants had estimated a projected revenue for the 2021 fiscal year. Uh, their their thought is that this is a conservative estimate, but we're gonna we're gonna run with one million. And staff is recommending an increase to the budget of 333,000 to help with um, enforcement related to these cannabis operations. Uh, after uh, after our budget is adopted, staff will return to council with the plan. On, on how to fund and mitigate this enforcement plan. Uh, this part of the presentation, I'm gonna go ahead and hand off to Dixon. He's gonna walk us through our 10-year plan moving forward. And with that, Dixon. Good evening, Mayor and Council. Um, so the chart you see here reflects uh, what our fund balance picture will look like if the $10.3 million deficit is not, is not resolved. Uh, as you can see from the chart, uh, we end uh, fiscal year 2021 uh, with, a, with a positive fund balance of $3.9 million. But by fiscal year 27-28, we have a negative fund balance of uh, $178 million. Next, next slide, please. Uh, in contrast, uh, if we bridge uh, the deficit, uh, we end fiscal year 2021 with a, with a positive fund balance of $24 million. However, uh, it decreases uh, to about $108, $108 million by 2728. Um, in both of these scenarios- uh, Can we see that prior graph? You, you passed it. Yeah. Okay. So in, in both of these scenarios, uh, the forecast uh, is we had mentioned in previous presentations that it's, it, it's, it's, uh, it's mostly being driven by two main assumptions. Uh, that measure Z expires and is not um, and is not renewed. Uh, it also we also make an assumption that uh, no call there'll be no callers going forward uh, for all employee groups. But uh, in uh, in a scenario that measure Z does get approved uh, at 8.75, uh, the city won't start seeing any uh, revenues uh, for measure Z until fiscal year 2023. Um, the fund balance will decrease to about $6 million in fiscal year 2021 uh, before increasing to about $31 million by 2728. Uh, these numbers, uh, Council, might seem a little bit different from what we had presented to you in the past uh, because these numbers are being driven now by uh, the baseline is changed based, uh, based on COVID. So we reduced, our, we reduced our sales tax numbers, meaning our forecast going forward has is, is actually decreased uh, quite a bit. Now, you know, could you explain this graph to me one more time? This assumes expiration of Measure Z with with no no Measure Z sales tax, correct? Yes. Yes. So and do, this, do this we have a graph that shows the assumption that you just discussed? Uh, I, I don't have a graph um, for you, Council, available, but we can certainly have it at the next at the next Council meeting. Yeah, I'd like to see some graphs assuming no Measure Z with Measure Z. Um, and then also the um, assumption as to whether the reduction, in, you're saying that you're assuming the reduction in sales tax will continue in subsequent fiscal years. We're not that they'll continue, but our baseline, uh, the beginning baseline has changed. So it's too soon for us to tell 
whether we're going to, to be to be back to where we were initially we were before. So um, it's 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 difficult to say at this point. I think by the time we do our media review, I think we'll have a much clearer picture. So we'll we'll bring we'll bring back an updated uh, uh, an updated forecast. Thank you. If I may, Dixon, also, um, I know there's a proposed uh, ballot measure coming up before the voters, um, if they gather enough signatures uh, to decrease the uh, user's tax. Can we all add on in case that that does go through uh, by the voters to decrease, just so we can get an idea, because that the user's tax alone, we're looking at, uh, hold on, 20, was it 23 million on that one, I think? Uh, right. My notes everywhere, so that that's concerning to me if that happens. So it would be helpful to have that in, on hand as well. We, we can certainly have that available for you. Uh, with that, I'll, I'll turn it back to uh, to Paul if there are no more questions on the on the tenure plan. Thanks, Dixon. Um, next slide, please. Moving forward, um, at this time, staff is requesting uh, the approval, our um, mm -hmm. uh, council approval for the following. Um, budget balancing plans and uh, with that we'll get into it um, again uh, this is kind of a slide that's in review but this is what uh, staff is currently seeking a council approval for to bring back on the march 17th sorry june 17th budget adoption meeting uh, if council will recall our general fund revenues were looking to come in about 124 million with expenditures at 134 million reflecting a deficit of 10.2 million the plans we laid out this evening reflect uh, about $7.2 million to help bridge that gap. And these include uh, our additional revenues, uh, departmental reductions that we've gone over in detail of about $2.6 million, transfer residual funds and uh, our audit close out of $1.4 million, uh, library and parks and recreation expenditures to be absorbed by our cultural development fund of about $774,000. Uh, evidence impound transfer of 287,000. Uh, move uh, public works expenditures to our gas tax of 455,000. And the transfer of approximately 60,000 from our PD body worn cameras to the VIP program. Again, no general fund impact here. Overall, we're seeking council um, approval on the uh, budget balancing plans of $7.2 million. And again, that would leave us with a gap about $3 million that we would look at bridging moving forward. Presently, staff is working on trying to bridge this gap with concessions with our employee groups, and we will bring you an update to that at a later time. Next slide, please. Um, our next steps include uh, our next budget study session, which would include our CIP, our Capital Improvement Program, at the uh, June 10th meeting and a public hearing adopt and adoption on our June 17th meeting. Um, Mayor and City Council, this concludes our fiscal year 2021 preliminary budget presentation. At this time, staff will take any questions, concerns, or comments the council may have. Thank you very much, Paul. Um, I have the budget book in front of me. I do have some supplemental questions. Now, I have multiple versions. I have the slideshow, which I think is phenomenal, the slide deck. I have my budget book that was provided to me on Thursday, Friday. So I'm referring to my budget book on packet page number 25 um, under overview of the operating budget second paragraph. Um, the the um, about the fourth sentence there, it says among these strategies include the one time use of alternative funding sources. Um, in the slide deck, I got that there's a pro – my question was how much – because it, it's silent. It really doesn't s say how much specifically is being used. But I surmise on the budget slide deck that you just presented, we have about $2.5 million. Is that accurate? Am I, am I guessing or uh, utilizing what I just received to plug that question? Let me back up. I want to make sure I'm with you on the same page. I'm looking at page 25. It says overview of fiscal year 2021 operating budget. And you were talking about the second paragraph, sir? Yep, correct. And it's okay. second paragraph about the third sentence in. It says among these strategies include the one-time use of alternative funding sources. 
So my question is, how much is that? I think I just got the answer in your slide deck. It's $2.5 million. That sounds about right. But for some reason, I am not finding that sentence. Looking for it right now. Mayor, it's also about halfway through the paragraph. Those one-time sources are listed in your attachment as well. So maybe Dixon, can you go back or Mitch, can we go back to that slide deck? Because I, I want to talk more about that and I want to better understand the $2.5 million. Uh, if that's in fact the, um, yeah, that's, that's the number that I just got presented. That was the drill down that I needed. Um, I want to talk really specifically on fund number 242. Um, does that mean that $820,000, what, where, what is that fund? Uh, what happens if we, uh, is that pay, uh, do we pay that back at some Great. point? Where, where Great question. Uh, we can let Great. our public works director speak to that, Chris Jensen. Actually, I can speak to it, um, okay. Terry, if it's okay. Um, Mayor, that's a great question. Um, let, me, let me try and walk you through that. Over the years, the city has had several street construction projects that they have done, and these have going back 20 years. I'm, I'm, just, I'm saying that right now. Uh, it, in, in the beginning of this fiscal year, staff set out to reconcile our fund 242 and 123 funds. What that $820,000 reflects is completed projects. Here's what happens. If the city applies for a street construction grant or, or whatever, uh, they'll get that funding. What the city has done in the past is they have, um, put, they have put that revenue, if you will, the grant revenue, into the 242 fund. But they'll fund the project out of the general fund. Later, the project will be completed through, yeah. over, through yeah, when, once the project is completed, what should be happening is that grant money that the city has earned because they've paid for it should be uh, reimbursed to the general fund. Okay. Over time, with a turnover of staff and, and department heads, um, it, the, the identification of those funds has been lost. So what we've done is we've gone back and we've audited to the extent that we could programs and projects that are now completed or have been completed years ago. And those grant monies were never moved to the general fund where the costs were absorbed. Does that make sense, sir? Yep. Okay. Got it. That's fine. It's legal. And uh, because that's the emphasis on, uh, on that paragraph here on page 25 is that we're utilizing these one-time funds. Yes, sir. So I want to, I want to know that um, there's no Prop 218 restrictions on this, that we can use it, and it can help uh, balance uh, the general fund budget. Yes, sir. Okay, very good. Let's open it up to questions from council members. May I right make here. a comment? You know, I, you, you say that it makes perfect sense, and to me, The money should, we should have been on top of this. This is to, this is incompetence and or just a lack of management, and that money should have been be, being dealt with the way we're dealing with it now anyway. So I understand that it's there and it's kind of a windfall for us to help balance this budget, but the fact that we're not doing that at the end of a project and transferring that or paying our general fund back, that's a real problem, and and it's something that we need to get a handle on going forward. I, I'm not blaming any of current staff. You said it's been going on over 20 years, but that's my point that we, we've got this, uh, in this case, $820,000 sitting over there uh, that we should have had sooner. Uh, actually, maybe, actually, it's like 1.3 when you do 820 uh, yeah. plus 644. You're right, you're right, John. And, and the point is that I guess it's lucky that we had it sitting over there out of way because we probably would have spent it inefficiently anyway somewhere else and wouldn't have it today. That's the point I'm trying to make here about how, and I'll make my statement right now, it's amazing how all of a sudden we have a $10 million deficit and all of a sudden we've got $7 million, we're looking for another three. It's always, I've been told by city managers for 12 years, don't worry about the million bucks, we can find it. Don't worry about the 300000 We can find it. And my point is, again, I want to make it clear. I'm not saying this to public, to current uh, uh, staff or employees, but I'm saying government has to be more efficient and pay attention where the money is. Follow the money. It's crazy. Okay. Uh, city manager. 
Uh, well, we could, couldn't agree more, um, but I will point out that during the last five, seven years, the city has been in bankruptcy and not had stable staff here. We were run by consultants for many, many years. We finally have a stable staff here that have the time to dig into these and audit these accounts. I um, mean, you're correct. We're lucky that we Jerry, have- Jerry, I, I would argue that we haven't had stable, stable staff for 30 years or we wouldn't have been- Hey, Fred, Fred, we're, we're not into dialogue. Let's, let's let Terry present. Go ahead, go ahead Terry. So, so we are fortunate in this unique situation with COVID that we have this unique funding, but it has been thoroughly audited. We didn't just find it, we've been aware of it, but we wanted to audit it and make sure that we were correctly identifying where it needed to go. And it's taken some time to do that. And that's what we've done. Okay. All right, uh, Mr. Mulvihill. Yes, uh, I'm looking at the uh, budget document, the three ring binder, and I'm looking at the police uh, portion of it, page 267. Want to turn to that page, and I see about oh eighty five percent of the way down. It says Dignity Health is going to be budgeted four hundred ninety seven thousand dollars this year. What's that for? We'll let uh, the police chief speak to that. So Dignity Health uh, requested that they have police officers at the uh, two. Uh, emergency rooms that they have currently in the city of San Bernardino Community uh, Hospital and St. Bernardine's. So they are funding uh, four positions at the police department. They are funding it? Yes. Why is it on our budget here? Because the money comes in, it has to be budgeted to be expended. But Dignity Health is paying for it? Yes. 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 Okay. I got another question and it deals with the fact that I think we really should be funding the VIP program fully. Uh, we had a vir virtual uh, town hall meeting last night in which we went over a, a recent study of the San Bernardino, what it cost, what every homicide in San Bernardino costs the public. And I think, uh, Chief, you can probably step in on this one too. Uh, looking at all the costs uh, from the crime scene to the hospitals to the incarcerations, every homicide averages 200. $2.3 million. Every shooting industry injury averages $871,000. Now, the purpose of the VIP program is to identify individuals that have the highest likelihood using data. And I, I simply have to compare the uh, analysis that we're using Operation Ceasefire from Oakland and properly implemented, which we're not doing, right. properly implemented what in Oakland uh, between 2012 and 2017, they lowered homicides by 46% from uh, 126 to 72. Now, those homicides are primarily young minority men, 18 to 24. And I think that's what we're talking about today from minority communities. And the VIP program is targeted for exactly that. And we need to transform that. And that's what's being one of the items that's being discussed today out in the streets. So my point is that we really need to fund the VIP program. Uh, we Thank can't you, Mr. Mulvihill. Uh, Ms. City Manager, you'd like to respond because currently VIP is being funded. And that's no, it's the not. Point. And stop oh, interrupting me. If I could on, explain, Jerry. if I could explain, please, what yeah, we're ahead, cutting, Jerry. what we're cutting from the budget is a general form portion of a contract that we had, not the contractors that are out in the field. This is the person that was helping us set up the program, the consultant. What we are proposing tonight, the grant, the VI, Cal VIP grant has been extended to September. So Correct. we're proposing that you take the $60,000 that we're saving from the body-worn camera contract that we negotiated to fund that gap until that grant comes through. So we are not proposing to cut those contracts at all Correct. with the contractors. Are you saying that David Miranda is not going to be here? Yes, he will be here. He is still funded in this budget if approved. Mm -hmm. Now, the body-worn cameras, uh, are those new cameras? No, these are, this is a contract that we've had for five years. We're in the last two years of the body-worn camera, but we contacted the vendor and asked if we could renegotiate the contract to bring the cost down. And we have done that, and they've agreed to renegotiate down $60,000 for the last two years of the contract. 
so we can cover the VIP program. Um, right now, uh, from our discussion of our town hall meeting last night, they're not going to be funded. To, uh, in other words, they're not going to have sufficient funds for the contractors to be out there. I am proposing that you use the $60,000 in savings that we right. renegotiated from the body-worn camera to keep that program and the contractors operating until we know if the Cal VIP grant comes through in September. Now, Miranda is on your own budget? Currently? Yes, he is, he is general fund and he's an employee. He is the VIP manager in the city manager's office. Okay, because I really, this is a, an important program and it only works if you properly implement it. We agree. And if, it, if, if you do properly implement it, the model works. And uh, we know what to do. Uh, we need to act on it now. Thank you. And I would ask that, you know, uh, everybody should take a look at this document that uh, has been published by the, uh, it's the uh, National Institute for Crime, uh, for Crime Justice Reform. And it, again, it breaks down uh, just the cost uh, you know, it goes beyond just the, uh, the, uh, the human tragedy of it, but just gets it into dollars and cents, uh, and it, it doesn't go uh, completely uh, down. You know, it just costs about the public cost, but uh, looking at some of the other studies that have been done, residential property values, uh, there's a study done, and I think that the chief has done, a has done a study or knows of a study for San Bernardino, but for example, in Philadelphia, Every homicide lowers property values within three quarters of a mile, 2.3%. And uh, with regard to the uh, reduction of homicides in the city of uh, Philadelphia, reducing homicides by 10% led to a $13 million increase in property taxes because of the stabilization of, of uh, property values. Uh, so again, we're not, we're not talking about necessarily the, the human cost and obviously the trauma, but uh, we're talking about the actual direct costs and some of the indirect costs as well. And again, uh, from my point of view, VIP program should not be looked at as, you know, shuffling off to the side, especially we're talking about the people, primarily minorities, primarily neighborhoods, inner cities. And uh, again, uh, we should be looking more at that. And I think that's what the people in the streets are talking about tonight. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Jim. Um, let's let's open it up to Councilman Nickel, sir. You're recognized. Yeah. Well, every year I get asked by constituents, "Okay, you budget, you balance the budget, but what are we getting for it?" And uh, at the end of the day, a budget is a document that indicates how we are going to accomplish what we set out to do next year. And uh, I always harp every budget year. I always refer back to uh, Riverside's budget and uh, the fact that they have a performance based budget. So every year, in addition to how much we're going to spend and how much we're going to collect, what are we going to accomplish for the money that is spent uh, and the work that is done? And I still don't see it in our budget. Uh, I know we were working in October toward establishing some strategic goals so we could start getting toward an orientation where we can really start to baseline our performance as a city. I'm very concerned that we have decreasing uh, sales tax revenue. I'm very concerned about crime rates. I'm very concerned about the trajectory we're taking as a city. And the budget is a performance document. It's not a dollars and cents document. It's a document that is really a planning document that helps us determine what we're going to accomplish this next year. So with that, I know that we started discussions in October and obviously world events have, have brought us to a point where obviously things are changing quite dramatically. But where are we at on the strategic goal setting process? I don't know what the goals of this year's budget are. So Ms. City Manager, maybe you can elaborate. I would be happy to, Councilman. We actually had the strategic planning session in December, January of last year. And I brought forward to you the 2020 action plan that you approved. And we've been working uh, feverishly on those items, um, even in light of COVID and now the most recent events. So we do have goals that we've been working towards. Where are they in the budget? The, there are goals in the budget for the, each department. Obviously, most of it's baseline service at our budget level. We don't have reverse. What is budget. baseline service? How it's many getting by day to day filled? on our baseline budget. How many, how, many, how many ACPs are going to be issued? 
what are those goals? I get asked that every year. I'm at, constituents ask us, what are we getting for the money? And well, councilman, we would be happy to bring you those things. That wasn't on our twenty. It should be in the budget. Plan, and I'm gonna I'm gonna harp as I do every year. Look at Riverside's budget. Look at what they present to their residents and their taxpayers. Um, they include performance measures and strategic objectives and how they have performed uh, in the last year towards achieving that. And I still have yet to Henry, see how let, me, let me interrupt. Are you are you referring to I mean we we have strategic goals that are placed on packet page seven. Are you yeah. talking more? Look at Riverside's budget. So for okay. every department, there are goals. In we, other words, we so also, Matt, my, may I interrupt? We do have goals in our budget, um, Councilman. I'd be happy to show this with you in the budget. Show them okay. to It needs okay. to be in the public document. The public it is. It is. Okay. I would be happy to share those with you. Okay. okay. Uh, and I would refer you to Riverside's budget. It's a, it's a very good document. It helps the community understand exactly what their city government is doing. With that, I do have some questions on your revenue schedules. There's some very concerning. Before you that point, Henry, you talked about performance standards, and I don't think those are the kinds of things that we. I don't see any performance standards here. We're we're, we're juggling the numbers here without any kind of indication of, of how well the department managed their sub, themselves in the past. I mean, yeah, that, well, that, so that, for that, instance, that. you know, Riverside has a percent of potholes filled within one business day of receiving notification. Their goal is 95%. Um, Q1, they perform 52%. Q2, they perform 50%. Q3, they perform 44%. And Q4, uh, 51%. So you can actually see how these various departments are performing in respect to their budgets. Um, we don't do that. And I, I have not seen that since I've been here and we've been pushing for it. We have workshops, we have meetings. While, while we may not have that level of detail, we do have in every budget looking forward performance measures. And this is, I'm showing you right now, our 2019-20 budget and that will be included in the 2021. Okay. Yeah, a bottom line is we need to operate on what we call a corporate paradigm. We are a, are a municipal corporation, and our job is to deliver services, not to pay salaries, not to collect fines and penalties, but to deliver services. That's what we do as an organization, and our budget needs to clearly communicate what services we anticipate giving for the money we're collecting and the people that we have working here. Now, that said, I do have concerns about the revenue schedules um, I'd like to go through a number of those. Uh, I can go offline and ask for the remainder, but there are a number of concerning items in the revenue schedule that I would like some explanation on. So I'm looking at starting at page uh, 56 and fines and forfeitures, um, looking at item 4428. That is our code administration civil penalty line item. And I'm seeing a reduction of close to 50% in ACP revenue. Um, and yet we still have the same level of code enforcement next year. What is the reduction in that anticipated uh, revenue from last year's budget? I believe Mike Huntley can speak to that. As you know, code was transferred to his uh, division, this department this year. Mike Huntley. There he is. Thank you, Terry. Um, actually, I hear the councilman's concern. I've had some discussions with code enforcement since they were transferred down to my department. They went from 14 and a half um, employees last year down to five full-time code enforcement officers today. So the bodies they used to have to go after and chase down um, these fines, they do not have today. So that's a direct um, reflection of the staff on reductions from last year. So it's a reduction in over 50% of our code enforcement staff is reducing our ACP revenue. And that's going to reduce code enforcement generally, correct? You're 100% correct. All right. That's what we're getting for our money. Okay. So next item I have concern with um, development impact fees. There's a whole number of items on the uh, development impact fee uh, schedule. Uh, schedules and it seems like we're budgeting zero revenue for our development impact fees uh, for next year. Is there a reason 
for that. Council, as I understand it, what we what the city typically does is with our development impact fees, we don't typically budget those, um, and we don't typically budget the expenditures. Uh, these. Uh, these well, why don't you let our public works director speak to the development impact fees or the development director, Kristen? Yeah, so specifically, I'm looking at page 66 and 67. Um, and we have law enforcement facilities, development impact fees, local regional circulation, development impact fees, regional circulation, development impact fees, not, nothing, zero. So good evening, Mayor, members of council. So my understanding on the development impact fees is obviously, I um, sound like Captain Obvious here, um, but it's based on, um, usually on revenues that we anticipate, right, as new development comes in. Um, so in terms of the public works side, and I, I apologize in the city manager, um, we normally are the ones who are going to go in and try to build the infrastructure after the fees are in place. Um, being new to the city, I'm not sure what the past practice has been in terms of developing those revenue projections each fiscal year. So as much as I want to answer your question, um, it might be something that maybe, um, maybe Mike Huntley can help with. Um, but this wasn't um, a, a piece of the puzzle that from a, an engineering um, or, or operations standpoint that we actually threw out there for what we thought was going to be coming in in terms of development. Most of the things that we're working on were already in process, um, and we're really just budgeting for um, the infrastructure from those fees that are received. So I wish I, wish I had a better answer for you. Okay, page 65 item uh, under storm drain construction 248 uh, line item 4818 storm drain fee again zero um, actuals year to date this year we're over a million three. Um, why are we, we we have no revenue on that line item. Councilman, if, uh, if I may. Uh, so. We, we are going to have those schedules updated when we bring you the CIP next week. Uh, all of those funds are related to, to our CIP budget. So we, we're just finishing up our CIP budget um, as we speak. Uh, so we have those numbers. There just wasn't enough time for us to include them. Okay. In, no, no, that's in, fine. I'm just, schedule. you know, I get interrogated by my bosses. I have 35,000 bosses and they comb through these documents very closely. So if I sound like I'm interrogating, I'm not. I'm simply passing on the concern of the people we all work for, which are our constituents, the residents and businesses of our city. And uh, we want to make sure that they, they, they feel confident that, that we're delivering on the services that they entrust us to provide. So with that, I do appreciate the work staff has done to put this together. Um, and I will accommodate, obviously, you know, we are in uh, extraordinary circumstances. But uh, we do, particularly this year, and particularly because voters are going to decide in November whether or not they have further confidence in us, this budget is absolutely critical that we communicate very clearly that we are being good stewards of their money and that we are delivering services in an appropriate, cost-effective, economical manner. That concludes my comments. Okay, thank, thank you, Fred. Fred. Please go ahead, Fred. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, I'm going to use this 60. Well, first of all, I want to ask one question. I've overlooked it somewhere. I'm sure it's in the budget somewhere. But is can someone provide me with the basic number that we pay annually to CalPERS? My understanding is somewhere around $28 million. Paul, you had that in one of your slides. Paul had that in one of his slides. Yeah. Things why, I, why is it in, in the uh, pie chart showing uh, on, on page uh, 34? Why wouldn't that be a part of the pie chart showing uh, $28 million there, which would change the percentages significantly? Hey, Council Fred, on packet page 26, there's about four paragraphs regarding our updated CalPERS contribution. And, and, 
And I'd like and to add in there, the, the, the cost is spread out among the departments. It's not one lump sum in there. It's spread out in your internal service charge in your departments. Mayor, if I may. I'm asking, um, a different I'm asking a different question. How, what is it a percentage of our general fund? I, Councilman, I'm going to have to look that up, but I'm going to let me answer it. There's two ways to answer that. There are two portions of there's two parts of our PERS that we pay. One is our ongoing number of cost, and that is allocated to each individual employee based on their earnings and what their what they have to pay for their retirement. There's another part of PERS that is our unfunded liability, which is a lump sum. Um, That's the number I'm interested in. He wants to know the number, Paul. I believe you had it in one of your slides. And and why doesn't that become a part of our of our uh, of our expenditures uh, in the it pie is, chart? It well, is. It's not in the pie chart. Well, Councilman, if I if I may answer that, in the million dollar pie chart. In the in the pie chart, every department is reflected, and in every department, you have salaries and benefits. Every department has a salary and a benefit portion that speaks specifically to PERS. In addition to that, our payment to our unfunded liability is accounted for in our, our general government. And that pie chart is, if I can get to it. Um, so if you look at our pie chart on page 32, the general government pie chart is $8.2 million. And inside in that pie chart reflects the unfunded component of our general fund payment. In addition to that, each department has a salaries and benefits that reflects their portion of PERS. So it's it's broken down in two areas. Uh, you're, you're, I'm not getting, it's not the answer I want. I, I'm not looking for a specific answer. I want to know what that $26 million is the total payment that we make annually against our general fund. It's, it comes off the top of the general fund, correct? Councilman, it, it is actually spread out. Yes, it's paid, but it's spread out over the departments. So you don't see like one, we're telling you the number, but we spread it across the departments. So on the pie chart, for example, the 4% of, uh, of community and economic development, the 4%, which is $5.5 million, part of that $26, $27 million is in that? In the form of salaries and benefits, uh, uh, that it does include PERS, yes. No, no, no. He's asking where the unfunded portion is, Paul. The unfunded balance payment. Okay. That should show up somewhere as a line item on the pie chart of our general fund. Our general fund is $134 million. Right. Hey, Fred, typically pie charts don't do reflect line items. That's why you have a line item budget. But okay. back to page 26, it clearly states here that in the fiscal year 2021, total CalPERS payments for both regular and unfunded liability payments are expected to increase by $3.7 million. And then it goes on to talk about a payment of $912,000 for unfunded actuarial liability. But that's part and parcel of the aggregate total amount of payment to CalPERS. Okay, I, I, I'll leave that alone. I'm going to follow up on that. I, I'm not okay. satisfied with the answers, and I think we're dancing around the issue. Let's go back uh, real quickly, and, and with all due respect to the PD and that article that came out in the paper the other day and what Jim Mulvihill referred to a minute ago, a $2.3 million cost per um, uh, homicide. Uh, that is as disingenuous as I've ever heard because 1.94 million of that is beyond our control. It's incarceration. That's a sheriff or the state level. So this 2.3 million dollars is very, very exciting to talk about and to present, but, but it is not costing our citizens 2.3 million dollars. Somebody's paying it, Fred. Somebody's paying it. Yep. Right. We are as taxpayers, but it's not, it makes it's it not sound the city. so. It makes it the way that it was presented. It made it sound as though the city of San Bernardino is paying $2.3 million per homicide. Now, my concern with the way that it was presented the other day was our homicide rate is going up, which is not good. And our other um, crimes are going down. Well, you'd have to have been in a, in a cave somewhere. 
to wonder why uh, other crimes are going down. Everybody's been locked up for three months. So I think that's also disingenuous. I'm making the point that we as government need to be honest with the taxpayers and tell them realistically what we're really doing. My comment about, uh, this is my next point, my next point. I'll use one example, one contract. We've saved $60,000 $60, on, um, on uh, um, the body cameras because we negotiated harder. Why did we negotiate hard? Because we're upside down financially? We should be doing that every day, negotiating these kinds of contracts and making sure that people want our business. And Henry used the word, or someone used the word, extraordinary circumstances. In the private sector, when you have to make a profit and, and you're in an extraordinary circumstance every single day and you negotiate contracts as if you were upside down and in COVID-19 and 20 and 22 and other issues. That's my point. My point is we as government need to be more cognizant of how we spend the taxpayers' money. And it's all—it's always amazing to me that all of a sudden we can find seven million dollars. We should have found that a long time ago. We should have found the sixty thousand a long time ago. And that's the points that I'm making. It's called efficiency and competency, and 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 it's being honest with the public. Those are my comments. Okay, thank you very much, Councilmember. Um, anybody? No, we're going to skip Jim and Henry. Well, we'll you guys have spoken. Uh, we're going to go to Councilmember Barra. I don't support that. I don't Councilmember Barra, please. Councilmember Barra, go ahead. Okay. Uh, I think this is a good time uh, for us to go uh, department by department. Uh, thank you, City Manager and staff, for the uh, three-ring binder. It, it really goes into detail. But I think this is a time for us to start looking at what kind of staffing our city really needs to provide the services that our residents require. Um, I'll, I'll give you an example right now. I'm looking at PD, um, and, I, and maybe uh, I think Chief McBride can tell me, uh, we have 20 proposed community service officers. We have 12 uh, proposed lieutenants. We have um, 42 proposed sergeants. Uh, how do they help the community? Um, on Sunday, I was along baseline. It is in my ward. The crime was awful. It was heartbreaking. I gave a list to our city manager and, and to our staff of all the buildings that were being vandalized out there. There was shootings. They, um, I mean, it's, it's, it's a lot to talk about. I was trying to call dispatch. Nobody was answering. Um, I, I have some contacts in PD requesting for PD to come out. The sheriffs, thanks, thanks for them being out there. I, I got I got good feedback on them. Um, the CHP, I saw them along the 215 freeway blocking some of those entrances. Uh, but RPD, where was the presence? Uh, this would this was a perfect time for our police officers to have that engagement with the community. Well, so I'm going to interrupt you here. That is very unfair to our police department. Would you let the chief of police speak to that and what our officers endured on Sunday evening and what they accomplished? Have you been watching the news and what's gone on in other cities in this country? I, I have, but this was in my ward, my city manager, and, and, I, and I did report that. So uh, on my end, I, 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 was request, I was being asked if the headquarters were being vandalized. I drove around. There was a lot of police patrols covering the headquarters. But on baseline and watermen, people were speeding, they were blocking traffic, they were robbing, looting all over on watermen. Council member, uh, let's ask your but, question related okay, to so the budget. Is, the budget is issue is before us. I'm okay, going to call you out of order. Re refrain from alluding to other issues in our community. Right now we're talking okay, about so, budget. So, so I need to find out then. How do the positions that I questioned right now, okay. how do they help our community? Because right okay. now, I've had complaints from residents and business owners with a lack of response out there. Um, I do thank our officers that show up uh, when I see them. However, on Sunday, it, it, was, it was heartbreaking what was going on. And so I want to know 
why 44? Well, I, I believe detectives and corporals is to solve the mysteries, the shootings, that, the homicides that are happening. Uh, community service officers, though, 20, 12 lieutenants, and 100, uh, 42 sergeants. How do they help? Are they the actual boots on the ground that we well, need? They, let me just answer this, Council Member. You started off by asking how many positions do we need in each category? Well, let me just say this that in addition to the officers that we had working, uh, we had an additional 150 officers in the city from allied agencies, more than we even have in staffing entirely. So you ask, how many officers do we need? Well, definitely far more than the 400 that we had, but obviously we go back to what can we afford and what can we use to get things done in the city. And, oh, you, ask about, and, and you ask about um, why would we need police officers at the station? Well, you have about a $30 million investment here in the building, along with millions of dollars worth of cars that the city can least afford. And we have in there budgeted uh, replacement vehicles that are not gonna be funded next year. So you ask again, how many, why do we have a presence down here? Is to protect the taxpayer's investment in the community, which is their police department, along with critical infrastructure down here. So the question is disingenuous. We had um, a lot of our officers that were being pelted with rocks, bottles, and being shot at or by the Waterman uh, Discount Mall. And I'm sure those people uh, appreciated the fact that we tried to reserve that property. But meanwhile, we were in attack across the city and we needed those officers in here to assist us because we were overwhelmed. I, I'm, I wish that you would have started the question off by asking and appreciating the, the hard work that the officers did because they endured quite a bit that night. We're lucky that we didn't have any officers killed like the other cities and we didn't have any officers with serious injuries that, and we didn't have vehicles destroyed at the cost of millions of dollars to the city. So I appreciate your concern about whether or not we have um, people here, but they were doing the best they could with the resources we have available in the city. Okay, so I was I was focusing more on the higher ranking positions, um, right? If you can relay on that. Well, I, let me say this, Lieutenant that Sergeant. those positions make sure that the officers are doing their job, that those boots on the ground are moving in the right direction and doing their job. I think that you need that. It also makes sure that those officers who used great restraint last night were there and we had a supervisor and a manager to make sure that they were doing that and, and following the job. Because what you see happen in other cities like Minneapolis is that you didn't have a supervisor on scene and look what's caused the chaos across our country. So when you ask, why do we need a supervisor or manager? That, that's, the, that's the answer right there. And, and just know that the frustration I'm expressing right now is out in the community. This, well, this is what business owners and residents themselves are complaining about, which I've sent some to you guys already to answer to and you know say this, that I think you're more informed than the average person in the public about what the because you've been receiving updates so I appreciate the fact that you've been informing the public and not just putting the face of the public uh, the police department out there is not doing their job because that's a disingenuous argument you know uh, very well that the officers what they encountered and the fact that you're not passing it on and trying to put it down the, on the police department is is really unfair to the employees that that risked their life that night well, I, I did recognize the three that were at Home Depot on Highland because High, uh, Home Depot was being vandalized all night long. I mean, they're, they're not even operating in our city, the one on hospitality, the one on Highland. So I appreci I did thank those officers, and I did say they were there. So there was three. But, however, on Waterman and Baseline, all I saw was just people going in and stealing from all of these small businesses. They, they, they were... I mean, there's a video out there that even Jack in the Box employees were being attacked and they run, ran out from behind that building. It's on the video. I mean, when you see these kind of images, you have to ask, how are we really helping the city? How are we helping the people who work and live in our city? Right now, that's not what we're seeing. Um, and so a lot of people are, are, are not happy. They're not happy. And I've, I've shared those concerns with, with our city staff. Council member, what question do you have regarding the budget? I was asking. Get back on point here. We're yes. not here to discuss the riots. We're I've here to asked talk about the, several times. We're here, here to talk about the budget, Ms. Zabara. So if you have any more further questions on the on the budget, well, let's get I, right I would like I would like for us to focus from department to department before we okay. approve a budget like right. this. Um, if, I could, if I can speak. If okay. I speak. All right. So um, the, the department heads have made uh, the they've had the difficult task of making cuts to make sure that we have balanced books at the end of the, at the end of the next fiscal year. And now is, it is the, the council's responsibility to look at the offices uh, that we, we are in many ways the executive of. So I want to take a look at the uh, line item budget for the
the council office as well as the mayor's office. So if we can all go back to uh, page 122, I'd like to um, I'd like to pull up those uh, those numbers and see if we can get something done there. So I. I understand. Council member, are you referring to the preliminary budget book that you received last week? Yes. Okay. All right. So um, I see here actually page 123, and this is the general city council council support. Uh, do we currently have filled the salaries uh, for temporary part time? The account number being uh, 5014. No, no, those you do not have those positions filled. Okay. So what I would like done is uh, the council is. You're looking for council to approve uh, some of these uh, some of these cuts or some of these proposed budgets for these departments. So included in that, I would want the twenty five thousand uh, dollars to be pulled from this, the the salary for a temporary part time staffer to be used to offset any cuts to the two staff members that work the council office. So there used to be five staff staffers for that council office. Now we're down to two, so they're doing twice as much work and uh, they're being paid the same and potentially they could be taking cuts to their salaries. So what I would want is for that $25,000 to be used to offset any cuts to both the salaries for both those staffers and any remaining amount to then be put back into the general fund. Yeah, if, if I may, council member, I appreciate that and I think that's a great gesture, but I have to remind you that across the city as we take cuts, all departments will be doing more, all of our employees will as we make these cuts. So I just want to just make sure you recognize that. So I would like I would like the council to to vote item by item on this. So so we're not doing it all clumped together. Um, so I would like that done. Can we? I, I would make the motion that we redirect that twenty five thousand dollars again to offset any cuts to those two staff members and then any remaining amount to then go to the general fund. This council right now, and I hope the public will take note that we are asking for people to cut salaries that they have earned. They don't have to say thank you for this paycheck because they have fulfilled their responsibility to the city. We are a municipal corporation and we exist solely to provide core services. That is trash, streets, parks, libraries, the administration of our finances and public safety through our police department and our fire. And these individuals are now being asked to make cuts before we make any cuts to our office is a, is a sign of poor leadership if we do not do this. So I ask please, my colleagues to join me together, join with me to make the cuts we can make without making any, any, any interruptions to the quality of service that we need to provide to our residents. And I see this as $25,000 that does not need to be spent right here, right now. Uh, this $25,000 should be spent to offset uh, the, the salaries for these two staffers because no, no employee that works full time for this city should live in poverty okay. without first expending every other option we have. And there are right now employees that risk living in poverty while they work full time for this city. And so I would like that done. If we could vote on that, I'd appreciate it. Council, council member, I would, like, I would like to remind you that these are bargaining group issues. We can't single out two employees. They are part of a bargaining group. So we can't just single out two employees in one department um, to not take cuts. They need to negotiate as part of their bargaining group. Okay. All right. Well, um, I wasn't aware of that. But what I will do is I will say that we can cut that $25,000 and put it back in the general fund. Okay. Thank you. Um, I, uh, uh, Councilman San Member Sanchez, I agree that the, the two uh, employees that we have working in the council office definitely works um, twice as hard, maybe if not three times as hard as they did because um, went down from a five uh, member staff to a two member staff. But, um, you know, one of the things that Terry is talking about, you just can't pull those two and then just and not think about the whole unit as a whole. So I agree. Okay, that, you know, I agree. They're doing a great job, but we just, we just, we just can't, we can't do that. I so agree let us, there could be so let us just pull that twenty five thousand dollars and put it back into the general fund. Um, so I, I'd like, I'd like for the council, okay. if we're in all agreement that we do that, would that be fine? I, I, I can agree with that. Okay. All right. So um, I don't agree with it. What, what, let's go back to it. <laughs> let's go back to it. What do you mean? Where, where do you, where do you Explain it on merit, Mayor Pro Tem. I don't think you have support yet. 
if, so, if I, uh, Councilman uh, yes, Hill, there's yeah. $25,000 in part-time um, salaries in your budget in the council. Is that on page 123? Correct. Yes. Okay. Correct. That yeah, is I support it. I support it. Put it back in the general fund. The, the okay. 5014, Council Member Mobile. Yeah, I see All right. it. So the, the next item um, in our office, uh, we have allotted to every council member uh, $6,000 for meetings and conferences. Uh, I cannot in good consciousness take this money knowing that individuals, again, who provide vital resource or vital, vital services to our city are taking cuts to their paychecks. Uh, I would ask that we reduce the amount uh, to two thousand dollars per council member. The re I, remaining balance, I, the remaining balance, to go back into the general fund. I second. Yeah, I can. Any I can opposition? Go, I can go with that. Oh, oh. okay. Hold on. Three thousand instead. One. Reduce from six thousand to two thousand for each council yes, member yes. for their okay. travel and conference budget. So, Fred and Juan, what where, what say you on this? Just a quick question. Is there a rollover from the previous onto this next one? I don't believe we've rolled over. There's no carryovers, I don't think. No. You would have to lose it. I don't know. What, maybe Dixon can speak to that. But. I don't know. Yeah, it's new every year. There's, uh, Councilman, there's no carryover. The, the, you have to budget mm -hmm. for the money every single budget year. Mm -hmm. It doesn't automatically roll over to the, to the, to the following year. Okay. Um, add, and I, I'm okay with this, but I just want, want everyone to understand that this isn't just, and of course, we've got a kibosh on, uh, on, on, on training and, and travel and conferences right now anyway, and I think we should. I think we can get away without many of them. But it also is other uh, costs that are incurred. Uh, you know, I think $2,000 is probably enough, but I just want to make sure everyone understands it's not just travel and conferences it's uh i think it's uh, ink and paper and other things that we no need. it is not it is not no they have, there's a separate no, line item for that yeah, it's separate okay oh, well then i want a refund <laughs> okay uh council I, I genuinely appreciate this we are showing real leadership by taking cuts to our salaries not our salaries mm -hmm. but our budgets first before we do anything else I have one more question on the council mayor budget, and it goes back to the the, the lease lease space. I didn't see on this budget a cost allocation of the office space that we occupy. I know it's a significant amount of money. I don't know where that lands in the budget or which department is is responsible for the office space cost for us, but uh, I'm sure it's significant, and I do want to see that reduced. Council member, I can speak to that. As you recall, at the last council meeting, we brought forward another year lease for Venier, and you asked us to go back and renegotiation space, and we're doing that, and we expect to bring something to you. But to answer your question, the lease payment for Venier Tower is budgeted in the general government section of our budget, and let me try to flip to it real quick. Well, I, I'm in agreement with uh, the council member. Um, th this is an ongoing issue, and uh, I think it will be addressed by staff in the coming hey, weeks. Ted, let, let our city manager address the, the question by Councilman Nickel. Hold on, Ted. Go ahead, city manager. I'm trying to find the exact payment in here. Chris, do you know it off the top of your head, but it is funded in general government. Barry, that's on page 131. It's going to be account number 5171, Vanier Tower Rents, towards the middle bottom of the page. And what is that payment, Paul? The amount we have uh, the amount we have earmarked is five hundred fifty nine thousand oh fifty six. So as we negotiate and come back what, to what the page line, was that? What page was that? Page one eighty one. One eighty one. It's going to be so towards the, the bottom uh, middle half of the page. The account number is five one seven one under rentals. Okay. That's a half million dollars in rental, and, and we take up an awful lot of space on, on that one floor. I have so, to believe that, that the, the portion of that half million is pretty significant when it comes to yeah. the council. 
So as you directed us, we're negotiating for the eighth floor. It will also be coming cost back to you with costs because, as you know, we didn't live in City Hall for free either. So we'll be bringing you that um, back on the seventh. Yeah, and that was another question I got. What are the ongoing uh, maintenance and sustaining costs of the vacant City Hall that nobody is occupying at present? We're, we're working on going to bring that back to you on the 17th as well. Is that in the budget? Does that get absorbed in property maintenance? Um, I got that question from a constituent and I had no answer in terms of how much we're, we're paying monthly or annually to, to preserve the old city hall building that remains vacant. Okay, so are, are we, can we move on to the mayor's office? Uh, Chris was going to address Councilman Nichols. Oh, okay. Sorry. <laughs> so I was just going to share, yes, those costs are currently absor uh, absorbed in our facilities maintenance um, budgets. And um, we can bring the information back to you in terms of what the costs are with the building in the, um, in the state that it's in now in terms of um, utilities, electric costs, and things yeah, like that. Yeah, because I saw different maintenance facilities, building maintenance, different line <laughs> items, and I don't know where it lands or how much it is. That would be helpful. Yeah, we'll find that out. Thank you. All right, please proceed, Councilman Sanchez. Yes. The mayor's uh, office. So now the uh, on the mayor's office, uh, the council has made a cut uh, to their, their travel expenses. Uh, the mayor's current uh, budget for travel uh, is sixteen thousand uh, dollars, sixteen thousand two hundred dollars. Uh, I think it would be fair to cut that down to four thousand dollars. What do you base that on, Councilman? Four thousand dollars. That's uh, divide that between twelve months. I think that should be sufficient. Are you referring to Fund fifty one thirty two? I'm referring to Fund yes fifty one thirty two. Okay, well when you can when you become the mayor, you can you can argue that, but you haven't had a conversation with me on this. Uh, do you this think is it's a, fair? Do you think it's this fair in this city? Hold on, hold on Councilman. This is this is a surprise to me. Uh, this is uh, frankly uh, well, you've never had a convers never had conversation with me on this. To me, John. You've never had a conversation with me this on this, Ted. No one had a conversation with me about changing our six to two. Well, or with me, so we don't have to have a conversation with you. Well, it's it's polite and courtesy. I mean, you you I guess not, Fred. If that's what you want to continue to do, is be uh, civil, uncivil. Well, it's so, a council uh, manager. For I would like to, here. Mayor. I would like to afford you. I would like to afford you the opportunity. We can we can discuss this right now. What would you think would be a fair a fair allotment for your travel? Well, I haven't had that. We can have a cup of coffee over that, and you can discuss it with me. No, I, I don't think, publicly. I don't think, I think we should discuss it publicly. What okay. do you think is fair? Well, I'm not, I'm not prepared to make that assessment right now. Okay. Well, I would say for $4,000, would that be fine, council members? I'll support you on that. Okay. All right. There's no opposition to that? No. And frankly, uh, the privileges of the mayor are afforded in the charter expenses. You guys can go ahead and try to do this. No, but that's I not have true. charter. It's, it's I have. Place. Hold that's on, Mr. True. Charette. Hold on, Mr. Charette. Not true. You're hold on, Mr. Charette. Hold on, just a minute. Um, I uh, the the city charter. Call the question. I'd like to call the question. Hold on, Henry. Let's call the question. It's no, a I'm not. Maneuver. No. Call the question. Let's no. Call the question. Move on. Let's no, move on I'm not going to move on. No, I'm not going to move order, on. Order, call the question. No, I'm not. Point I'm the order. chairman of this meeting. Of You're order. out of order, Mr. Nickel. Just You're a minute. Sir. You're out of this order. is my budget item. I will talk and address on this matter. The chair. The, char the city the charter the affords the mayor no, and no, all elected officials to travel and to be reimbursed regarding their expense. Charter. The city charter allows and affords. I will second that. There's no reimbursements of that. Mr. Nickel, all you're out of order. All in favor of appealing the decision of the chair, say Okay, aye. Mr. Nickel. Aye. Aye. Mr. Aye. Nickel. Okay, Mr. Teddy Sanchez, I will now defer to your chairmanship on this vote. No, you're not. Mr. Yes. Nickel, so if we can, if the there bottom is, line if there is, is, a, if there is no dissension on this, uh, uh, city manager, I think you have direction. Okay, $4, we're going to take a break. A we're going to take a break. Ms. City Manager, let's take a five-minute break. I we'll don't take want a break. break. We'll take a break. No break. I don't need. We don't, I need, don't a need a break. We don't need City a break. City manager, let's get business done.
I want to go. Trying home. to get business done. Let's get okay. Business done. Well, then what? you're going to need to allow your elected mayor to respond yeah, we, to this. We, 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 we appealed the response. chair. The mayor pro tem is now chair. No, I'm vote. not. I'm not. I, Please, I, I'm I, in the I middle of like, a sentence, Mr. Like, Nichols. I think this is, I think the bottom this is line done. is the there city is, charter is, is affording elected vote. officials in this city like to, to conduct business, Mr. 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 Nickel, please. you're not yes. you're out of order, sir. Mr. Mr. Nickel, you're out of order. Council you're out of order. The budget. We're a council. Oh, the city charter affords privileges for reimbursements on all yes. of that stuff. Yes, city manager, I believe you have direction from the council. Overriding the chair. Okay, well then, get ready for this. This is nonsense, guys. We ought to be focused on this the is a budget local discussion. Budget. We are discussing our budget. Not particular City measurements. Have direction. Not continued have direction. measurements of square footage of the mayor's office. The city council needs to get to work on overall economic renaissance for this we, community. We are making We're reductions to our budget. No, you're not. Our, you guys are just, tonight. you guys we are playing make. games and not doing your job as city council members. We are doing our job. Actually. City manager, I, I believe you have your right now. And we are not being allowed to be a city council. We are being prevented from doing our job. All right, Miss City Manager, let's go ahead and talk about the global issues. Uh, are, is your staff completed their presentation? Our presentation is complete. We're just here to answer your question. What is your yes, what so is your you ask? What is the staff now. recommendation on tonight's, uh, Mr. Espinoza? Um, we need to provide some direction to you. What is the staff recommendation on tonight's matter? We're Basically, going through that right now. We're going through that right okay. now. Okay. We have a workshop, Mayor. We need to ask these questions publicly and make the council do their job. All right. Yeah. Well, all right. So I don't think there's need to argue about this anymore. Let's move on. The council has decided that your budget will be four thousand dollars for the next fiscal year. The next item and the last item I want to bring travel, up. Travel. The travel budget. Yes. So the last item I want to bring up is the uh, is the state of the city. So we allot twenty thousand dollars for a two hour event. I don't think that the city should be paying for that. I've asked staff if that includes staff hours worked and it does not. So I don't know where $20,000 is being spent over two hours. Well, that's hours. funny because you have never had a conversation with me on the state of the city, Mayor Pro Tem. You have never once brought that up personally to me in any conversation. And yet you're asking staff members about this event. So you tell us, what what what, uh, what have you learned? I know I have learned. Here. I've learned that the, no staff is being paid with this twenty thousand dollars. So that twenty thousand dollars, we should be redirecting to some of our priorities. If there is a single council member here that doesn't think that we need to bolster our code enforcement, please speak now. But I would like the twenty thousand dollars to be set aside for code enforcement education. There are other cities that are using it to fund letters that go out that advise people of our municipal code and some of those most violated and commonly violated municipal code laws that create the most widespread blight in our city. If we is can there use, a motion? It, yes, it is. If I may. I second it. If I may. Go ahead, Ms. City may. Manager. Go ahead. This is not a general fund. It's, it's cultural development. It's cultural development fund. That's, it comes out of a different fund. Isn't cultural fund? It was, a, fund? it was a cultural impact fund that we got money from. And I would like to yeah. put that money towards it's considered uh, general fund. IRC event. Yes, it well, is considered general fund money. Considered the, general fund the, money. The source of the money is the cultural development, but it is general fund money. So I would like that money set aside for code enforcement, literature, and education. You can't use cultural development fund money for I, code enforcement measures, Mr. Council. Yes, you, yes, you can it's because, because it's it is general, general it's fund. It's a restricted Prop 218 account. No, How can you not. use cultural it's development not. funds no, it's not. code it's enforcement? Not. You'll have to find no, the money somewhere else. It's general fund. It's general. If, if I may, if I may, I will, I will send you out tomorrow the report on the cultural development fund. It is indeed general fund, but, but governing body made a decision to use it for cultural type so Projects. the letters, so there are letters that's, that introduce people to our municipal code. There are, most of my residents don't know that a municipal code exists. They don't know what rules they need to comply with. What this what does is it lets them know. What is the amount in that fund? What's Pardon? the amount? Pardon? What's the amount in the fund? 
I believe the balance, uh, Paul can give this to you, I'm not sure the exact balance is, we do have ongoing revenue into that fund as development occurs, but I believe, if I'm not mistaken, it's around $4.8 million. No, well, there's our, there's our balance uh, budget right there. We're anticipating using some of that for other events this year. But Mayor Pro Tem, I do have a suggestion for you. Yes. If that is something that the council wants to entertain, maybe that $25,000 in the council office would be a good use for that, that you were wanting to put back into the general fund. No, I one. no, I think that okay. we shouldn't be spending twenty thousand dollars on a on a two hour event. The Absolutely city should not, not be And that so could be done over could, the television or recorded like the Absolutely. Uh, president of the United States does. Look, I, I, I know would recommend I we just cut it and and we reserve those funds in the cultural development fund and if we find a an additional need in the future because the cultural development fund is general fund that we allocate at that time, but I'd, I'd much prefer that we, we, we look at ways we can reduce some of these unnecessary expenditures at this time. We're in an extraordinary year, and we have to be good stewards of, of, of the taxpayer's money. Cultural Development Fund is more or less a general fund. Um, that's the way it was structured, and yes, my hope is that we could use it for cultural development but we are in extraordinary circumstances and we may find a need for that funding and we need to make sure we're flexible enough to use that funding if necessary. Henry, would you entertain splitting it half, 10,000 back to the, back to the, uh, the, the general fund and what half I of that like into do, letters? Mr. Sanchez, what I would recommend we do, we need to have a broad conversation about code enforcement. I am very, very concerned about the trajectory we're taking in code enforcement generally. That's why I brought the item up earlier. I know we are having an item coming back to the council regarding um, the, the code enforcement aspect of our operations. I would like to reserve that conversation until we get that staff report, but I, I will take your recommendation under consideration. I don't think it's a bad one, but I don't want to pick apart the code enforcement discussion that really needs to be part of a broader discussion in terms of our overall code enforcement strategy. Right. Hey, Henry and- uh, Okay, I, I'm willing to concede. I'm willing okay. to concede that. Okay. Listen, uh, and but, I think I could make the nexus that uh, uh, that cultural fund uh, could be probably turned into code enforcement which would change the culture in this city. Amen. I'm, I'm uh, I can make that nexus real easily. So I'm not <laughs> suggesting we put $4 million into code. Right. I would love right. to. I really would. But what I'm it's suggesting- It's there. It's there. But let's, fun, let's, not, let's not rob that, it. Let's, that let's fund is smart. something that we should be really yes. talking about and maybe make the nexus between that and how we improve the quality of life in this community. Amen. Yes. And I just like to say thanks. Um, this is what well, we're supposed I, before, to do. Before we, line yes. item, by line uh, item. The city, the city manager's been been meeting. Uh, what was it? What, what comment did you have? I just had concerns that you were going to go hire code enforcement officers with the five million. It's not ongoing revenue. It's one time. There is some ongoing revenue to that fund, but you need to understand that if you wipe it out this year and you try to hire code enforcement officers, you won't be able to pay them next year. Oh, we need to talk about it. Okay. okay. Go ahead, Mr. Sanchez. I believe that is all the cuts that uh, um, that we needed to make in both those offices. I want to thank the leadership, genuinely. I want to thank the leadership for making those difficult decisions that before we cut to anyone else, we made cuts to ourselves. And it shows real leadership, so I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. All right. Uh, any other... Any other things we want to get off our chest about the budget? Councilmember Barra? I mean, this is this is a good segue that we go department by department, as I mentioned earlier, before you guys cut me off. I only talked about police department, but I can definitely go department to department on each tab and look at where our, we are spending money in and what we can adjust. Um, so, I mean, this is a starting point and this is a workshop. We're supposed to discuss how we're going to uh, balance our budget for this next year what's needed and what's not our needs versus our wants i just wanted to make that an announcement yeah, um, council member that's why we we presented you with the proposed budget that staff is recommending and, and i'm not what? happy with the proposed okay, budget then, because then we, we're not going detail by detail well the idea is that we give you our recommendation and if you don't agree with the recommendation you come up with something different for the council to vote on and we would incorporate that into the final budget that we bring back to you okay i mean city manager and i also had another question um if you can answer um I, I didn't see in the budget 
um, the field reps that we had budgeted for the mayor's office. Where do you have them? Um, you don't. This? That's, if, if you you don't. Where is that money? Where is that money right now? General fund. If you were paying attention, we they were transferred to the city manager's office, and that's part of the cuts to balance the budget. So that's that's uh, the thing is that I didn't see it for <laughs> the breakdown that you had. It's because uh, it's no trade. longer exists. We already passed that like two weeks ago, Sandra. Well, I mean, I'm looking at this report. We have the chief of staff listed there, his own line, assistant to the mayor, senior customer service rep, but an uh, administrative analyst, uh, analyst. But we didn't include in there the two field reps. That I mean, was in the part time. That was in the part time. That was budget. in the part time. And those were also cut to balance the budget. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Uh, moving on, Councilman Nichol. Yeah, one more question, um, just to the, on the presentation um, from Mr. Espinoza. Now, our, our liability costs have gone way, way up this year. What's going on? Well, Councilman, those are, those are going up. I think I'm going to go ahead and let our human resources and risk managers speak to that. Our, but basically, it's, it's based on the level of activity we're having. Um, We've had injuries, as you know, and our liability continues to uh, I think uh, Eddie can talk to that part. That. Oh, there she is. Great. Yeah. All yours, Eddie. Yeah, so essentially the way the premiums work, and those are just estimates. We don't have final numbers as we did receive the can indication. Can we that slide again, the liability slide? I, I'm, I'd like to recall what that number is. What, what page is that? It was on the presentation. The power yeah, what page on the presentation? I, I don't know which page that references in the document I have, but yeah. it popped out on, at me uh, during the presentation, and I think I overlooked it when I was looking through the budget book. Right. So essentially, the way the estimates work, they're based on our losses, and then what? Um, when we are provided estimates, we uh, give them all of our open claims so that they could assess, and then we go back ten years on the data. And then the insurance carriers will provide estimates. Um, those are the preliminary indications that Paul presented. And with COVID-19, um, it's anticipated that um, those increases will be higher. These are work, workers' comp? or what, Workers' what? comp and general liability. And general liability. And what were the numbers last year and what are the numbers this year? I don't have the, no the numbers off the top of my head. I do know that there is an increase. And the, the main um, reason it's a double, was- It's almost, uh, can we pull that slide up? I'd like to see that slide if we, we can. If we can refresh. Uh, Paul, do you know what slide number that is? I Paul, was Paul you're, you're muted. Page 34, Councilman. 34, okay. Page 34 or, or slide 34? Slide 34. Uh, slide 34. Slide Slide 34. Can we pull that up real quick, Mitch? Yeah, okay. So I see, yeah, liability property insurance premiums budgeted at 2.4 2.4 million, an increase of almost 50%, almost eight hundred thousand dollars over last year. Um that's that's correct. And those are estimated increases. We're still waiting for um, the definitive numbers. And those increases are based on our losses. So whether uh, one of our properties um, takes, if there's damage to it and we file a claim, or um, if there what, are what any- What claims did we file this last year that pushed those premiums so high? Mm, I really don't have that level of detail at my fingertips, but I can definitely get that for you. I can provide. I'd like um, to drill into that a little bit. That's sure. a significant amount of money. And I want to know if having a lot of vacant property is contributing to a liability line item that's costing us more and more money every year. That's, you know, we need to get our arms wrapped around. This Wait, is a significant I, I must, amount of money. I'm, I'd like to remind you also, we've had some uh, high profile liability cases um, that would be included in our liability insurance as well. So we can get that detail for you. I'd like to know because this, this gets back to management and operations and um, those liability costs tie back to, again, management and operations. And we need to make sure that that number, we're working on how we reduce that number, not increase it by 50% next year. 
I'll get that information for you, Councilman. Thank you. I appreciate that. Of course. That's my that's my last question. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, council members. Um, I think, uh, Ms. City Manager, you have some direction tonight. Um, well, I would actually like to go over that direction to make sure okay. we're clear because we will be bringing Please. back on the 17th um, or thereabouts the final budget. And don't forget, we still have the $3 million that we're working with. Uh, with employee groups. On. So, Correct. Uh, so on your on the page 62 of the um, PowerPoint presentation, maybe you want to pull that up so we can all be familiar with that. Um, we're asking you to adopt these additional revenue, revenues as we've gone through. Um, what I didn't spell out for you is we had set aside um, in this additional revenues of 1.6 million, that also includes the new cannabis revenue. And we have set aside $333,000 as we talked about the last meeting um, for illegal enforcement. And we will be bringing back a plan to you to approve, uh, but we just like to set that money aside now so that we know that um, that's be coming forward. Do you need a motion now to approve this? Yeah, yes, that if yeah. you want to. I'll, I'll move to approve these. these and issues. Henry, why don't we make, ensure that you're referring to slide 62 as presented here by yes. staff, is that right? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Slide Is there a motion to support Councilman Nickel? Yes. With a second by Ted. All right. And, I and let's take a vote on that, particularly. Uh, Ms. City Clerk, if you'd uh, call the roll, please. Mayor Pro Tem Sanchez? Yes. Councilmember Ibarra? Yes. Councilmember Figueroa? Yes. Councilmember Charette? Yes. Councilmember Nickel? Yes. Councilmember Richard? Yes. And Councilmember oh, Mulcahy? No. <laughs> yes, yes. The motion passes. Okay, very good. Now let's get into the granular. We've had some staff, uh, I'm sorry, council members. Um, so Ms. City uh, Manager, if you want to do the clarifiers on some of those requests by our city council members. Certainly, let me go over these. Uh, council, or excuse me, Mayor Pro Tem Sanchez asked that the $25,000 in part-time salaries be transferred to the general fund. He asked that meetings and conferences for each council member re be reduced from $6,000 to $2,000. And then he asked that the uh, mayor's office, uh, account number 5132, meetings and conferences be reduced from $16,200 to $4,000. The state of the city um, from the cultural development fund be deleted, $20,000. And that's my notes. How? If I missed anything, please let me know. Yeah, there was just one other thing on um, the slides, um, the projections, the multi-year projections, really understanding what that looks like with or without Measure Z. And then I think to Ms. Ibarra's point, um, looking at the utility users tax and what implications, these are, these are some serious policy considerations that we need to understand as, as we go into the election in November. I agree. We're happy to do that. Thank you. Also, there's the FP5, the fire, the fire uh, district. Yes. That's yes, that's true. Don't forget yes. that. Yeah, but that won't impact our budget, but will definitely impact the services to our city. We agree. Yeah, and well, obviously, yes. The city manager. Yes. Are we going to have an opportunity to go um, department by department and look at all the staffing per department? Council member, that is something that you could have asked me in advance of this meeting. Um, if you have specific questions, we're here to answer them for you. Well, nobody answered my questions earlier, so I, I, I don't think I'm going to get answers. But um, I, I, I'm not happy with uh, proposed budget as it is right now. I, I feel that we are, are not properly told uh, what's what savings we have versus the expenses. Um, we, I've, me I've mentioned- We just some. gave you a 63 page PowerPoint on- Correct, no, but we did not go department by department. Um, for example, and I've mentioned this, um, our city clerk's office is saying they're saving us $29,000, but we, we don't even have passport revenue. So that's misleading she's, itself. 
We need uh, to our, acting city, our acting city clerk is happy to speak to that, but we propose bringing back the passport program, which is why she's now including revenue for that. Would you like to ask? There she is. Okay. So by bringing back the passport revenues and adding a records management specialist, that will help to improve the services that our department provides to the community. And I mean, I, as you know, our department is a two person department right now. So it's very difficult to stay on top of our task and duties with a two person department. And, you know, like I mentioned earlier, <coughs> sorry, may throw this right. Um, bringing in that records management specialist and bringing back the passport um, services would help fund for that position as well. Correct, but right now we don't have a savings, um, as it's saying in there, that's my concern, um, that we're bringing in people, we're adding we're adding into that department um, without that revenue. Uh, originally, and Ms. Uh, City Manager can confirm, we stopped passport um, revenue per the City Manager's direction, correct, last year? That, that is correct because we didn't have proper staffing. The um, acting city clerk has proposed that we bring that program back next fiscal year and there will be associated revenue with bringing that program back. And there's no possibility that um, they might lose staffing and once again that, that revenue does not get counted. It's, it's almost <laughs> like how my colleague Fresh Red always says we always put the, the horse before the carriage. I mean... Uh, that's that's city, how I see this. If the city council were to decide to not fund the staffing, then we would not be able to have the passport program. That is true. Yeah, the only item I would take out from there is the PRA assistance. I mean, I would. If, if you do that, if, if you, council member, you're making a decision not knowing how the department has to operate. The city clerk is the expert in her department, and she's telling you what she needs to operate her department properly. If you, if you disagree, that's certainly a policy decision, but she cannot carry out what she needs to do. And she'd be happy to sit down with you and tell you what the responsibilities are of the city clerk's office. Okay. It's just that right now, it, it doesn't show me a savings. That's, that's just where I'm standing. Thank you. Okay. Uh, let's wrap it up here, folks. Um, we have... I guess uh, the motion, Ms. Ledoux, you're trying to seek clarification. Does that conclude the clarifi uh, clarifiers? Oops, sorry. Yes, I believe it does. Okay, all right. Um, and we'll codify action on a motion. Motion and a second on those? I'll move. I'll second. Okay. And if clerk would call the roll, please. Okay, Council Member Sanchez? Yes. Okay. Council Member Ibarra? No. Council Member Figueroa? No. Council Member Charette? Yes. Council Member Nickel? Yes. Council Member Richard? No. And Council Member Mulvio? Yes. The motion passes four to three. Okay, very good. I will uh, use my privilege to veto that. Um, thank you very much, city council members, for your input tonight. I think we have some huge opportunities. I want to thank and express our deep appreciation to our city staff. Um, thank you for your patience with us electeds. Thank you, uh, city manager and our city staff. It's a, we're moving the ball in the right direction. We need to get those employee concessions um, and we will await those uh, responses. Our next scheduled uh, meeting is tomorrow for our regular general, our regular council meeting and um, we'll adjourn tonight's meeting. Thank Can you. I make an announcement, Mayor? Go ahead. A, before we leave, we need to take a moment to congratulate the class of 2020. Um, our seniors from college and high school in the area um, okay. didn't get to have an appropriate graduation. So congratulations to the class of 2020. 
Very good. Thank you. This meeting is now adjourned. Thank you very much.